Annyeonghaseyo to each and every one of you. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about sour bamboo. And sour bamboo in the Mongling dialect is what we like to call jokao. Jo refers to as bamboo and kao means sour. In the Hmong culture, sour bamboo is typically used in soups, but you can find it being used in soups, stews, stir fries, and so many more dishes all over Southeast Asia. So I wanted to talk to you specifically about the types of sour bamboo that you can find at your local Asian grocery store, which type I like to use and why, and then which type of sour bamboo that goes well with a certain type of protein. So I hope you find this video informative for those who are interested in learning a little bit more about sour bamboo. With that being said, let's just get to it. So when looking for sour bamboo, you can typically find it at the dry section of your local Asian grocery store. They're either bagged, they can be canned, they can be jarred. And all of these brands are very different in terms of texture and the sourness of it and the type of bamboo that they use. And I do have to say sour bamboo is pretty much an acquired taste. A lot of people don't like it because of the strong bamboo taste. It could be a little bit musky, a little bit too strong for them. So a lot of people actually don't really like it, especially sour bamboo. It can be a little bit too acidic. A lot of people don't really enjoy that flavor as well. But if it's done right, cooked properly um, and paired right with a type of protein or just cooked right, um, it's actually pretty pleasant to eat. Now when it comes to sour bamboo, there is quite a lot of different brands, but today I'll just go over some of the most common brands that you would typically find at your local Asian grocery store. But some of these brands are pretty much what you would find at your local Asian grocery store or even more depending on what your grocery store provides. So sour bamboo is typically fermented, which gives it that really nice acidity. Certain brands would add vinegar to make it sour. Um, a lot of brands that I've noticed also use citric acid to make it sour. So all of the sourness really depends. So for this particular brand, this one is the one with the chili, and then this one is just a regular sour bamboo shoot. And um, they're both the same brand, but they're both different in terms of flavor. I would say this one with the chili is very strong in terms of acidity and as you look at the ingredients here they use citric acid to make it sour same with the other one here so for this brand it's probably not my favorite brand to use i would say the sour bamboo it's a little bit too strong for me in terms of acidity the bamboo flavor is also very strong so i tend to rinse it really well like more than five times to get rid of that smell and that acidity but texture-wise, it's pretty good. I like using it to pair it with beef. This one goes really well with beef, but this one is also great with seafood. So for the next one, these two are pretty similar. These two are pretty much jarred in a plastic container like this. Uh, they're different brands, but for me, they both kind of do the same work in terms of texture and flavor. Now, Dragonfly is probably the most common brand that you would typically find at your local Asian grocery store. And Dragonfly has a ton of different types of bamboo in terms of texture, the slicing of it, and the type of bamboo that they use. But for this particular one here, they use citric acid and acidic acid to make it sour. Texturally, it's slightly crunchy, but also tender. And then we have the cock brand here. This one is pretty much the same as Dragonfly. I would say uh, same size in terms of slicing of the bamboo. Texturally, it's the same. And the use of acidic acid and citric acid is also seen here just like the dragonfly brand so both of these pretty much work the same in terms of texture and flavor and they are probably the most common ones that you would probably find people using for soups and stews and especially in the Hmong culture so either or of these would work so for this one you would typically see it being paired with pork uh, it goes really well with pork bones ground pork uh, smoked pork. It pairs really well with it and it's pretty light and the sourness is not as bad as the first one but I do also rinse it just to kind of lower the acidity of it but other than that texture wise it's pretty nice. It's a little bit crunchy. The smell 
of the bamboo is not as strong as long as you give it a really good rinse. All right, so for the next one, this is also the Dragonfly brand, and this is just sliced sour bamboo shoots. This one is probably my mom's favorite one she likes to use because of the texture and the flavor. This one is not made with citric acid from reading the ingredients. It's just bamboo shoots and water. But um, the sourness probably comes from the canning and just the bamboo itself and how it's preserved. But other than that, you can tell the color is a lot more pale yellow and it's pretty tender um, in terms of texture and the bamboo that they use. In terms of sourness, it has a pretty good acidity to it, but it's not as strong and as pungent as the first two. So for this one, it actually goes pretty well with any type of protein. It goes well with beef, it goes well with chicken, it goes well with pork. So this one has a lot of flexibility. And then this is the Singing Bird brand. I bought this brand because this one was made with vinegar. So instead of acidic acid or citric acid, they use vinegar to make this bamboo sour. The bamboo is sliced into strips like this. And when I tasted it, it actually was fairly good in terms of the acidic flavor. I would say give it a good rinse a couple of times before you use it into soups. This one is pretty mild, so it's pretty good with any type of protein. So a little bonus for you all. These two brands are probably my dad's favorite sour bamboo. And these are actually seasoned sour bamboo. What I mean by seasoned is that they are mixed with other herbs, seasonings, and spices. And it can be eaten straight out of the jar over fresh steamed rice, or to eat as a side dish, or just as is, or to be put into soups or salads as well. So these two brands are probably my dad's favorite brands that he likes to buy. The first one is the Dragonfly brand, and this style is the Lao style here. And if you look in the back of the ingredients, you can read that it has some mushrooms, it has a variety of different herbs and spices that they put in here to give it extra flavor. And then this brand is the Pantai brand. And if you look at the ingredients, it pretty much has the same ingredients as the Dragonfly version, just with added herbs in there and other vegetables as well. So for these seasoned sour bamboo, they are pretty flavorful because they have all these spices and seasonings to it. They're a little bit spicy. They are slightly sour, but not too sour. They have a little funk to it as well with all the different spices and seasonings that they add in there. But this is pretty much what they look like. Um, you can tell it has some whole chilies in there. You can see a little bit of mushrooms in there. Um, it's thinly sliced into strips and you can see a few specks of herbs in there as well. My dad loves to take these when he goes on a road trip or camping just so that he can have a little bit on the side dish to pair it with sticky rice or rice or any kind of grilled meat. But to simply eat this, you can just put it over fresh steamed rice and just eat it all together. So for the next one, this is actually homemade sour bamboo that my mom likes to get from North Carolina. They actually make and plant their own bamboos over there and they actually make their own sour bamboo. And the bamboo is a lot tender. It has a really nice uh, bamboo flavor to it. It's not strong in terms of flavor and acidity, so it has a really nice subtleness to it. And texture-wise, um, it's tender, slightly crunchy, but also really pleasant. So for this one, they thinly slice it into strips like this, and it's great to use in stir fries or soups. Now this one is actually really hard to find unless you know someone that can provide you with information to get this homemade one. But if you can't find it, I did recipe test how to make sour bamboo at home and it actually came out pretty good. So this is the sour bamboo that I made. And since some of you might be curious how can you make your own sour bamboo, I'm actually going to show you. So when I went to the grocery store, I went and bought a few pouches of poached bamboo shoots. You can find these at the refrigerator section. Just make sure you look at the name of it. It should be poached bamboo shoots. 
And if you turn to the back and look at the ingredients, it should just say poached bamboo shoots and water. Now any brand will work as long as the ingredients just says bamboo shoots and water. So I'm going to start out with two of the packs here and each pack weighed about 10.5 ounces. And the first thing you want to do is just to give it a really good rinse. And then we're going to go ahead and slice it. So you can slice it however way you like. You can do it really thin, you can do it into strips, you can do it into thicker strips like this. It's really up to you. I kind of like it into strips. So I'm going to cut it into strips like this. After you finish slicing, go ahead and grab a really good sterilized glass jar and then place all of the sliced bamboo in it. Now to fill this up and give it that really nice sour taste, I'm going to go ahead and start out with uh, some short grain rice here and we are going to give it a really good rinse. And for your first rinse, do not throw away the water. We're actually going to use this rice water to ferment our bamboo. The bacteria from the rice will actually help ferment the bamboo and give it that really nice sour taste. So go ahead and pour the rice water into a measuring cup. It should be about four cups total. And then we're gonna add in some sea salt. and give it a really good stir. And then divide it equally into each jar of bamboo. And you wanna make sure it's completely submerged and fill through all the gaps. Once you pour it to the top, go ahead and seal it really well with the cap. And then we're going to place this somewhere in your kitchen, preferably slightly warm and dark area. And let this ferment for at least 7 to 10 days. Less depending on your area. If it's warmer in your area, it might just be 7 days. Since it's colder in my area, it took about 12 days for it to fully get sour. So you can go ahead and open it after the 10th day and kind of try it. Um, but it took about 12 days for my bamboo to turn sour. But other than that, this is what it looks like when you want to use it. Pour it into a strainer, give it a good rinse, and then you can use it for cooking. So for the fresh bamboo, it goes really well with any type of protein, but especially chicken. The chicken really complements the lightness and the freshness of the sour bamboo. So I highly recommend using this type with chicken. So with that being said, my favorite kind of sour bamboo would have to be the homemade sour bamboo. And the reason why is you can actually adjust the flavor of it. You can make it to your liking. You can add more salt. You can make it more sour. You can make it less sour. So you have a lot of flexibility. The second one would be the canned dragonfly version here. And then the third one would be the dragonfly one in the plastic container along with the cock brand here. And then the singing bird brand in the glass jar. And then the last one for me would be the JHC brand in the bag. But like I say, there's quite a lot of different types and brands of sour bamboo out there, but I would love to know which brand and which kind of sour bamboo you like. If you ever eaten sour bamboo before, do share it with me. So with that being said, stay tuned for my next video. I will show you all how to make these type of soup using sour bamboo.